Now in this video we're going to be setting up some basic little checks. So for example when we do the test fire on the server we want to see if the hit is actually a valid hit. Now we really only want to do that if we actually hit an actor. So to some extent uh, we don't need to really waste resources doing it for each and every shot. So only if we actually hit something. So what we're going to do here is actually there's also going I'm going to be pointing out a very critical issue here as well that you'll see in a second and that is the difference between a dedicated server and a player hosted server with certain uh ticks set for like your bone positions and all that kind of stuff. So pretty much when we shoot on the client right now, let's say we're on a dedicated server, we shoot on the client that Line trace is not starting where the socket actually is on the client. It's going to be starting at a different location. So we can go ahead and. Oh, one thing I also want to do I want to change our fire, uh, change it from server hit result to client because that is what we are in fact passing in. And then we create our check function. So it's going to be a boolean. So bool is valid shot and take in two hit results. So I'm just going to copy this. One's going to be the client. The other one's going to be the server. We're pretty much going to compare the difference between the two. So now we can create a definition and drag it down here. So what we're going to do from here, actually we can simply, we don't need to take in a server hit result. Eh, yeah, we will, because we want to do effects on the server side when we go to multi, or when we go to multicast the effects. So we need to do essentially this, but on the server. So if something was in fact hit, I know I, we need at least the start location of the muzzle. I'll go into why here in a second. Okay. So the reason we're separating the start location of the muzzle is for when we go to multicast events. So for example, if nothing is hit, then we don't need to play any effects like a spark on a metal container if that container is shot or blood on a player if no player is being shot we don't so we don't need to get the rotation or the end location of our socket or our round well actually wait no yeah duh because we're going from the client stupid me so we're going to have an else here meaning just nothing was hit And this is kind of where we're going to set up our effects, basically. So because we know nothing was hit here, we would multicast just the sound and a muzzle flash off of the firearm, as well as like the cycle animation. But if one of these are valid, then such as, let's say the player's hit, we're going to play blood, a little blood effect on top of everything else like the effects on the actual hit location of the hit result. So hopefully you can kind of see where I'm getting at. Okay, so let's get started here. We have our line trace. I call this one server hit result. Alrighty. So now we can do is valid shot. So if is valid shot. I'm gonna pass in client hit result and server hit result. And put our take damage function in it. Now here we're gonna pretty much be comparing the size or the, the size of the two vectors. So like uh doo -doo -doo. we have our start location and end location for each hit result. So the trace start. 
So f vector client start. That's going to be equal to client hit result dot trace start. We're going to do the same thing for the end. Then copy these, and we're going to do the server. So server start, server end, server hit result, server hit result. And here we can compare the size. So I want to print them out to show you the problem that I mentioned earlier. So client start dot size. Did the same thing for the server. And build. So pretty much when testing on a dedicated, it doesn't really have a reason to, the server doesn't have a reason to know all of the bone movements and stuff like that. So I'll test on the client real quick, or on a dedicated real quick. And we can look at the printed message. So client size, 831, server size, 766. You can see as I really kind of move around, the only thing that's going to be changing is the X and Y. Whereas on the client, X, Y, and Z kind of moves as the muzzle goes up and down as you're running and that kind of thing. So, way to fix this is go to our third person blueprint. If we click on our mesh, go to optimizations, not here. So, pretty much this section here, you can read it, is pretty much, it's always set for our pose, but it's not really refreshing our bones. So as we're holding the rifle up, it's not really taking into account our bent arms, for example. At least that's my understanding. So now if I test it again, you can see they are extremely close to some point where they're pretty much spot on which is what which is pretty much what we want because we want to pretty much test tolerances to make sure the start and end locations are within x tolerance in order for it to be a valid shot now if i were to undo the change i just did i'm going to go ahead and save it and then test on not a dedicated server and have a client do it it would be perfectly fine so now we have this set up, we can test our tolerances. So if uh, we can actually, let's make this a little easier. We're gonna do a float, client start, dot size. make these all floats. So pretty much what we're going to do is if client start is less than or equal to server start minus oh we'll get a tolerance of about eh, 15 centimeters or 15 units and if it's greater than or equal to positive. So this will give us about 30 or so units of wiggle room for uh, come on brain 30 units of wiggle room for like our tolerances. So it's within 30 centimeters. Now we're going to do the exact same thing again but for the endpoints. So client end, client end server end, server end. And that should be alright. We're going to return true. Else, eh. We're going to return false. It's probably worth actually printing this out.
valid hit. And build. I guess we also could have tested by shooting the player, but oh well. Alright. Let's try it out. Alright. Not giving me a valid hit. So let's print out. The difference for the start. So that's going to be client start. Yeah. Minus server start. Just get a general idea. That'll be fine. And one for the end. Less than or equal to server start. I think I just made a stupid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I just made a stupid. Alright, so we're testing pretty much. I feel like an idiot. Alright, so. If we are less than server start minus 15 so clients hmm. this is incredibly easy but my brain does not want to work right now Alright, I feel like a complete idiot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, this is like the most basic. Yeah, if it's greater than or equal to 1, or less than or equal to 100. So it's within 1 to 100. Greater than or equal to minus 15. Less than or equal to server start. Plus 15. Yeah. <laughs> I was just being stupid. Which seems traditional at this point. Alright, change it out to the endpoints. And we are good. Alright, so we know our hit is valid. If it is within these tolerances. which means our guy here should be able to die which is the case I think I'm out of range yeah so the other thing we're gonna end up doing uh, I'm probably not gonna be continuing with just a basic line trace 
I don't want to do an actual projectile. What I want to do instead is uh, kind of like a series of line traces to give it quote unquote physics, if that makes sense. So it's going to be a line trace that goes out x distance, stops, then another line trace on top of that. That's going to keep loop looping pretty much on a tick. So when the player shoots, it's going to actually be affected by, well, quote unquote, affected by gravity. But that'll be done in a later video. So for now, we're just sticking with the basic line trace. I'm going to increase the range to 3,500 for the weapons and remove our commented out portion on both the server and the client attack functions. All right, now to reiterate what we did real quick. When our, do, 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 wrong part. When our server uh, fire is ticked, or is called, sorry, we're going to be recreating the client, pretty much doing the exact same thing as the client, but on the server, so we're getting our start location. We're checking if an actor was in fact hit. So if an actor was hit, we continue and get our sockets, rotation, and end location so we can perform a line trace. So that line trace is going to be passed into our isValidShot function to simply test tolerances. So for example, if it's with the starting location of the trace is within this range and the end location of the trace is within this range, then we know we're good. Uh, another thing we can do is we could test and see, since we do have the hit results, if the server has a hit result that is not, or where am I at? That is not a player, meaning this will return false. So we could have an else here, and we'll make a comment, play, hit object effects. So such as ping off a piece of steel or something like that. If that's what you shot. So we can actually implement that as well. So make sure they are within tolerance. And here we do if server, or we need to do get actor. Yeah, the server hit result should have an actor, I think. We already tested. All right, no, we're not testing that, actually. So if a actor server hit actor goals server hit result dot get actor and if that's the case we want to cast it so if a survival character player equals the cast it's so a survival character from server hit actor meaning it is in fact the player we want this to be false, so simply add an exclamation point, or sorry, uh, what does a false cast return? Let's check that real quick. I believe it should return null. Eh, maybe. Yeah, oh well. So, do 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 do. Not entirely sure what actually able to pass in. Oh well. So. What we can test here. So, meaning it did hit a player. the wrong way. Come on, brain.
let's just change it out. So, if no actor was hit on the server, we don't care. We can simply return false. So, that equals null pointer. Return false. And that. What? No, oh, duh. Alright, so pretty much in our valid shot check, we're going to check and see if the server hit an actor. Which we can actually do above everything else, because if that's the case, we just don't care. We don't want anything else to run. So we're going to check if the server did not hit an actor. We're simply going to return a null pointer. I mean, uh, we're going to return false because, well, server didn't detect a hit, so we're not going to care. If it's not the case and the server did hit something, we're going to simply get the size of both the starting ending points of the hit results, or the line trace of both the client and the servers, and we're going to test their tolerances to see if they're within a range of plus or minus 15. So just about a tolerance of about 30... Yeah, 30 centimeters, because units in Unreal Engine are centimeters. In which case, we return true. Otherwise, we return false. We don't need our valid hit log. Then if that is the case, we're going to test and see if the actor that was hit, which we should be going off of the server hit result. Wait, hit actor. Actually, it wouldn't really matter. So we're going to be going off of the actor that we got from our client's hit result and continuing by then applying just a damage of 20 to it for now. Eventually we'll expand on this one to different parts of the body, do a different amount of damage. So, in the next video we'll probably be doing basic, just the animation of the bolt cycling as well as the effects for other clients to see such as a muzzle flash and audio. I don't think there's really anything in there for showing like a hit. Huh. I guess we could toggle on the sparks for like a split second or I might just end up making something. But for the muzzle we're going to be using P explosion and for the audio you can't hear it because I have it muted, but just going to be one of these two. Unless I find another recording online. So, I will see you then.